wasn't half snug and warm. I could hear my mum calling me to get up, but I just couldn't get myself out of bed. Are you up? I've called you three times already. Yes, Mum, of course I am. I knew it was a lie, but I just wanted to have a few more minutes. Dennis, I'm not telling you again. That was another lie. She was always telling me again. Ooh, school. I quite like it sometimes, but today was Monday. A Monday's football, and I hate football. Wouldn't be so bad if I had a proper kit. I looked at me kit. Huge old-fashioned boots and shorts that my mum got from my Uncle Kevin. She couldn't see anything wrong with my kit. I forced myself out of bed and looked out of the window. It didn't half look miserable. I felt miserable. I was miserable. Mum and Jane were having the breakfast by now and I tried to think of how I could get out of football. I know. I'll tell her I wasn't feeling well. A cold? No. A sore throat? No, she'd look. A swollen glands? No, she'd feel. I know. Earache? Yes, earache. I'd ask her to write me a note. Well, it was only a fib, wasn't it? I don't feel very well, Mum. I think I've got earache. You think you've got earache? What do you mean? I mean I've got earache in me ear. Will you write me a note to get me off football? No, love. Fresh air will do you good. I'll write to Mr Murphy and ask if you can go in goals. I gave it up. Murphy didn't need a note for me to go in goals. I was always shoved in goals. Me and Adam Arbuthnot were always in goals because we were the worst players. I had mid-breakfast and told her not to bother writing a note. Do you know, I don't think my mum believed I'd got earache. Well, finish your cornflakes. Simon will be here in a minute. I was still eating when Jane saw Simon and Louise coming. I was never ready. While Jane was letting them in, I rushed upstairs and stuffed the kit into my bag. Mum called me to hurry up. Simon would be getting impatient. The girls went off as I bolted down the rest of my breakfast. Come on, hurry up, we'll be late. I said to Tar to my mum and we set off. I tried to appear eager to get to school, but my feet were dragging, especially when we got nearer to school. Two other boys joined us. They had proper kit, they were all right. I knew all the lads would laugh at me. They always did. I tried so hard to tell my mum. But Mum, they'll all laugh at me, especially Gordon Pinder. Well, laugh back at them, you're big enough, aren't you? Don't be such a Jesse. She just couldn't understand. You tell then your Uncle Kevin wore that kit when he was a lad, and he scored thousands of goals. That shows how old my kit is, my Uncle Kevin's 29. We got to school in plenty of time. I knew we would. 
Gordon Pinder had his head out of the classroom window. Hey, Gordon Banks, have you got your kit? Simon looked at me. Don't take no notice. How many goals am I going to get against you? Simon looked at me again. Ignore him. Ignore him, that's the best thing. Get lost, Pinder, you rotten big head. He would have come to get me if it hadn't have been for Adam. You're a maniac, Arbuthnot. You could have choked me. Adam just laughed and ran out of the classroom. Gordon followed and they started to fight. Simon and me and the others came to watch. They were rolling in the playground and everyone was shouting. Gordon thumped Adam right in the middle of his chest. It hurt him and Adam got his man up. I really wanted him to do, Gordon. Go on, Adam. Do him. Someone pulled me by the shoulder. I turned round to bell to every... Oh, morning, Mr. Murphy. He pulled them apart. Animals! You're a pair of animals! What are you all but not? A pair of animals, sir. He started it, sir. He got me head stuck in the window. He could have choked me. You were a right telltale with Tinder. I was just telling someone to hurry up, sir. He's a liar as well. I'll deal with you both after football. The girls went to Miss Wainwright's room to get changed for rounders. We went to Mr. Murphy's room. Some of the boys were talking about the Mr. Celebrity who was coming to school to present a trophy to the football team. A Mr. Celebrity? Do we know who it is? Gordon gave me one of his books. Nobody knows who it is, else it wouldn't be a mystery, would it? Just then Murphy came along and told us we have three minutes to get changed. Pinder was ready before anyone else. He was doing all sorts of funny exercises. I started to get into my kit. The socks were too long, the boots, big heavy things. I could have worn them on either foot. Adam nearly looked as daft as me. He shoved his trousers into his socks and said it was a tracksuit. I tried to make my shorts as short as possible, but they still came down to my knees. The girls came out for the rounders match. And we stood and watched them. I wished I could have joined them. Better than listening to Gordon Pinder shouting at me. Why don't you die for it, you lazy beggar? Why didn't he die for it? Why didn't he go in gold? Why didn't he shut his rotten mouth? The next hour and a half were the same as usual. Rotten. Gordon and Curly Evans picked sides, as usual. The girls were already playing when we got out. They were enjoying their game. I thought I could have hit one of those balls quite well. Anyhow, better than stopping a rotten old football going through a rotten old goal. I went in goal, as usual. I nearly froze to death, as usual. And I let in about 15 goals, as usual. Murphy was shouting, Well done, Gordon! Go round him, Gordon! Shoot, Gordon! Hard luck, Gordon! I caught a glimpse of the girls giggling at me, but I managed to ignore them. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
he'd never blow the final whistle. But when he did, everyone made their way back to the changing rooms. Adam, Simon and me propped up a tree for a few minutes until Murphy glared at us and then we went in. Back in the changing room, Gordon went on about my football kit. He egged everyone else on. Listen, Pinder, my uncle scored thousands of goals there in this kit. Your uncle? Your auntie more like it. You look like a big girl. Everybody laughed. Look here, Pinder, you don't know who my uncle is. I was sick of Gordon Pinder. I was sick of his bullying and shouting and his crawling round Murphy. My uncle's John Mercer. That was a fib. John Mercer, your uncle? You don't expect us to believe that. That's when the fib became a lie. Crossed me heart and hope to die. And I spat on me hand. You're a liar. I was. I'm not. If I'd dropped dead on the spot, I wouldn't have been surprised. Back in the class, Gordon told the others what I'd said. He was sure I was a liar, but he just couldn't be sure. Why had I been so daft as to tell such a stupid lie? At least it shut Pinder up for the afternoon. The next morning, Simon, Adam and me went to Murphy's room, which was set up for the presentation. Gordon Pinder had to come along as well. I ignored him. Who could the mystery celebrity be? Murphy hadn't left any clues, just like him. We went to the class and I thought about it during lessons. At playtime, as we went down the corridor to the playground, someone noticed this man looking for something. I looked. I couldn't believe it. I nearly fainted. It was Joe Mercer, and he was being surrounded by the class asking for his autograph. Hand me a pen, someone, would you? Oh, there's a pencil. I pinched myself to see if I was dreaming, but I wasn't. Me? Yes. Actually. Is that right? Who yeah. do, do, do you support? Can I see? You died today, there we are. Isn't that? There's another one. Yeah. Who do you like? Okay. You've got two good wingers. Yeah. Lou McCarley, Pearson. He scores goals, doesn't he? Yeah. Can't give this pen away. When the rest of the class went outside, Adam, Simon and me just stood there. Gordon Pinder came up to Joe Mercer. Gordon pointed at me. Then he waved me over. Not Gordon, Joe Mercer. Hello, son. Aren't you going to say hello to your uncle? Er, uh, hello, uncle. I couldn't believe it. Neither could Simon, Adam or Gordon. How's your mum? All right. He shook hands with us. Are these your mates? These two are. I shook my head when he nodded towards Gordon. Gordon went red and walked away. Well, after presentation, come and have your tea with me. Murphy came along then and took charge. Good morning, Mr. Mercer. Good nice morning. to see you. You well? Welcome to the school. Thank you. Can I show you into the room where you're going to be making the presentation? I still couldn't believe what had happened, but I tried my best to hide my shot from Simon and Adam. Oh, yeah. This is uh, a brilliant class. Very bright, I like. Yes, and this is the trophy that you'll be oh, nice. presenting. Good. Uh, would you like we to stood at the door room? while Murphy showed Joe Mercer oh, the cup. Fancy it being Joe. Mercer. Uh, would you like to come and have a cup of tea in this afternoon? Why not? It was seven o'clock when I ran home. My mum was already in. I was hoping she wouldn't be too worried.
Where have you been? I've been worried sick. It's all right, Mum. I've been having tea with Joe Mercer. She sent me straight to bed. My mum never believes me, even when I am telling the truth.